Welcome back to The Talking Edge. I'm Josh Kincaid, and this is your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we are live at the World Trade Center in Seattle talking about bud tenders. They're the critical link between bankruptcy and billions. Today, we're here with some uh, fascinating guests. And so we're going to get jumped right into our panelists here. First, we have Alec Langston. He's a bud tender at Dockside Cannabis. Alec has been a cannabis enthusiast for several years and has been bud tending for about three years now. His passion is educating people about cannabis and bud tending, which has been a great outlet for that, being a bud tender. His goal is to help as many people and experience this wonderful plant as possible. His favorite part of the cannabis industry is changing that perception of cannabis skeptics and watching customers benefit from the guidance that's incredibly rewarding. And he's looking forward to developing within this industry and meeting new people along the way. We also have Brian Yeager, CEO of LemonHaze.com. LemonHaze is a cannabis tech platform with a history of presenting industry data and more recently hosting events with a focus on bud tenders, which is providing innovative and relevant education, networking opportunities, and business exchanges along with nationally recognized entertainers who have a prominent voice in the normalization and growth of recreational cannabis industry. Ashley is a bud tender at Green Lady Pot Shop in Olympia. She's a bud tender uh, in Olympia with a medical marijuana certificate. Rebecca Berry is a senior account manager at Work. Work is an all-in-one workforce management solution for highly regulated markets, including the cannabis industry. They've created an intuitive application to manage payroll, HR, timekeeping, and tax compliance with everything you need to streamline operations, reduce labor costs, and minimize regulatory risk. And also, remotely, is Claire Kaufman, Director of Client Services at Brightfield Group. Claire's nationally known CBD and cannabis business and marketing strategist. She currently works as the Director of Client Services at the Brightfield Group, an industry-leading CBD and cannabis market research firm. Claire has worked in the CBD and cannabis space for the past seven years. She's worked in-house for vertically integrated cannabis companies and formerly as a Northwest Regional Director for BDS Analytics. Claire has also recently served on the OLCC, Recreational Marijuana Business Council in Oregon. Her take on the future trends of the cannabis industry and the question facing marketers and entrepreneurs are sought out by national and international media, cannabis industry leaders, and key players in the traditional marketing world. I'd like to thank everybody for being on board and being on the, the Talking Hedge podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And about the World Trade Center, the World Trade Center Tacoma grows trade and investment by providing direct access to the largest business network in the world with 300 offices in 99 countries. The World Trade Center in Tacoma is a loan trade service center for the Pacific Northwest. They have seminars and award ceremonies, conferences that can generate contacts and contracts. Trade research can clarify opportunities and their matchmaking can turn those opportunities into trade. One of the things that I like about the World Trade Center is it gives me peace of mind knowing that I can use international guarantees or bank, uh, bank guarantees uh, as a member. And also the e-commerce export store, they partnered with Alibaba, which is translated into 18 languages and provides an opportunity to sell your product online internationally uh, to hard to reach places like Asia. There's high growth stores uh, that are 40% that have a high turnover rate. Um, and so all of this is about high performers sticking around. We see stores between 20 and 40% growth have more stable workforce with lots of quote, midterm employees that are you know, 60 to 120 days that stick around and almost no short timers that are less than 60 days. So the data suggests that while it might not matter how many people you go through, if you're churning and expanding at an insane pace, it seems like the people who are growing a little slower and a little steadier do benefit from a lower turnover so the highest performing bud tenders have the highest retention rates. Obviously, it feels good to be good at what you do, but they're probably also making a killing in tips. Is that even relevant um, in Washington? And how does turnover affect growth? I think the return customer base, um, since I'm medical, they like to deal with the same person every time. We'll get people, um, patients waiting on their on their specific bud tender to help them, whether that be because they trust the recommendations or because they just want to converse with them and hang out with them for a little bit during their day. But that all leads to what products they're consuming regularly. So if that bud tender is now gone, that consumer or patient is either going to go find where they went or go find another bud tender that can suffice that for them, fill that void. Claire, uh, what, what's your take on, on uh, how turnover affects growth? I, mean, I think turnover 
affects growth because every time you hire a new employee, it, it not only do you have to educate them about the SOPs of how the business works, but you're losing institutional knowledge of all of the products that you offer and all of the SKUs that you offer. And ultimately, you are, you know, cutting into your margins, what limited margins that you do have. Um, you know, more experienced bud tenders understand selling techniques like bundling or upselling. Um, and we see, when I used to talk to dispensary owners, they used to tell me like, oh gosh, if I could only get $5 more out of every customer, you know, and, and having the bun tender with the institutional knowledge to understand how to drive up um, that ticket price. If Imagine if 50% of the customers that came in spent just $5 more over the course of a month, what that would add up to over time. So I think when you experience turnover, and also it looks bad to your loyal customers that come in and don't see regular faces, um, and it affects the morale of the bud tenders that do choose to stay. Um, and and I think I think a lot of companies are really doing the best they can under the given circumstances. And I and I don't think even a lot of dispensary owners would refute any of the things that we're saying. And they're just saying, yeah, like I would I would like to pay my bud tenders more. I mean, I'm, let's find a way to do that. So I don't mean to say that it's, you know, someone's fault or this or that. Um, but turnover, I really think, cuts into margins and cuts into the institutional knowledge that dispensaries rely on to grow. Brian, have you, how have you seen turnover affect growth? Uh, it definitely uh, affects growth, but let me throw something out to just kind of question the universe a little bit mm -hmm. that's interesting. And, and again, this may be a little more Washington specific. But just in the way that our our laws were constructed with the thousand foot rule, and, and and you find our retailers slash dispensaries literally across the street from each other, there's different business models out there. So I'm, I, you know, they, so you, it is very actually I can name you about ten spots just like this where you will have one retailer whose whole business model is butts in, butts out, cheap pot, get them in, get them out, get them out as fast as they can. Then across the street, we'll have a much smaller retailer. It's not going to do those numbers. But the way that they're going to they're compete with the guy across the street that's selling cheaper than they are is they're going to have much more educated bud tenders. They're going to be much more of a, of a customer experience. And they're banking on the fact that their customers aren't going to mind spending, I'm, I'm pulling these numbers out of the air, but they're not going to mind spending $9 a joint as opposed to $7 a joint because they want to go in and have, have a good experience. But it's just two different separate business models. And what I'm always curious about is, the the budget that cares the budget that calls it a call them like we were talking about they're going to be want to be at that second store but you've got another issue because you've got those two retailers across the street from each other that big guy's pushing more product he's going to actually block certain products out of that smaller one because he's going to say hey mr processor i can sell you know x amount of dollars of this a month for you but you're not allowed to be across the street and so you, I'm guessing, again, this is, this is a little bit of a question out in the, in the universe, but curious what you guys think. Um, you can have bud tenders that, that, that learn about everything. They, they use the different technologies. They come to different events. They learn about everything. But they can't even talk about that product because it's not in their store because it's getting blocked out by the store across the street. So just like I said, just something I was, I was thinking about. And how that affects turnover could be um, that bud tender in the, in the butts in, butts out store, not as important to them, I would guess. So as a follow-up, Brian, it suggested that uh, investing more in bud tenders and giving them opportunity to grow in advance with a young company will help increase retention. Uh, Payscale actually points out that more employees in the cannabis sector are more optimistic about their company's future than American workers in general. Payscale also lists the median salary for bud tenders at $32,000 a year, which is $15.38. Uh, that's the minimum wage at SeaTac Airport. Uh, using sales data to pick out when there might be slumps and they're, and then incentivizing those employees, like Claire was mentioning, to stick it out past those days is one way. And then if you subscribe to Headset, for example, uh, you might notice that in January your numbers for the past three years are low and then you could relax the reins on your staff or maybe just be extra nice. And so, Brian, what tech is out there? What tools are available for bud tenders and their managers? Oh boy! So um, there's so there's a, there's a couple right now that are that are really working to be um, very bud tender specific, and there's two that are coming on the market right now that I can think of right off the top of my head, um, uh, which is Top Tender based out of here in Washington and Lucid Green, which is based out of Massachusetts. 
both of them have a model of, tr of educating the, the bud tender and rewarding the bud tender for the education. Um, now, they're both working to, to start establishing scale. They're, they're, they're very, very new on the, on, the, uh, on the market, but they're actually using, um, Lucid Green is using cryptocurrency. Uh, Top Tender is actually using, I think, Venmo, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. To actually monetarily uh, reward the bud tender for for taking classes for doing things online that they're then turn around charging the brands for. Um, there's a couple of different avenues to think about that. In that, is this something that uh, the bud tender will go to use because they're curious, or is there a way to almost make it where you you have to have it? And um, those are the two that pop off my head. Of course. You know the one that's that's always that's always been out. It's been out there for years, and they're they're, they're doing a lot coming up in the next few months. Weekly, we don't really think of it much as a butt tender app anymore, but they are um, they're doing a lot of new things that they're trying to get back to the butt tender. Um, so yeah, there's those are the two that are, that are jumping out in my head. Clara, has Brightfield Group reported on any tech uh, that? Bud tenders have, or their managers can use, uh, or have you seen anything that's empowering these bud tenders to make a better educated recommendation? Well, those are two different um, questions. So, you know, to give props to Headset, um, I've known them for years, and part of what their technology does is it helps managers have transparency into bud tender performance, so they can more clearly recognize and um, and then therefore incentivize their bud tenders that are their highest um, grossing employees. Um, in terms of educating them on how to make better recommendations, that I don't know, um, unfortunately. But in terms of employee incentives and tracking sales by employee and, and that kind of thing, um, there are technologies available to do that. Follow up, what tech have you seen that's available for bud tenders and their managers, and have you used any that have empowered you to make educational recommendations? I really think Top Tinder is one of the best platforms for bud tenders. It's not only complimentary for them to use, but when they sign up, they receive $20 tax-free. When they encourage their friends to sign up, they receive a $20 referral free and their friends still receive $20 for signing up. And on the Top Tinder platform, it provides a basic paragraph and keynote about a specific product. Um, and I think it's really important for brands to set themselves apart. Like I know Mammoth Labs does a really incredible extraction process that is too far scientifically above my head. But the way that they're able to put their bullet points out, it helps the butt tenders understand and be able to sell the product. It helps small brands like American hash makers that where hash is such a niche market connect with butt tenders and show them how to use hash so they can share with guests who may be trying hash for the first time. So I think I think Top Tinder is really hitting the nail on the head where they they have an educational platform that is concise and clear and also compensates the bud tenders for adding towards their repertoire. Mm. Tyler, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, to, to expand on the Top Tender uh, to point, again, we're, we're really big fans of them, as I'm sure you're well aware. Um, the, the one thing that I think the best way to build any business is building relationships with, with people that, that you talk to, um, whether it's at an industry event, whether it's a night out in the town, or whether you're maybe even just doing deliveries. I think it's always important to develop that human connection. And one of the benefits about uh, Top Tinder as well is through their platform, you can actually have uh, videos that you can shoot of your brand. You get to meet the people. Maybe you can give a site tour if you'd like. You can get firsthand visuals of the products via the video or just basic traditional photography. And I think having that is a great platform because people get visuals, they get to meet the brand and they get to learn about it from the people that created that brand uh, themselves. So in a, in a world now where everything is moving more digital and technology is more prevalent than ever before, it, 
And especially given the high turnover rate that retailers are facing, how busy everyone is in today's age, it's really difficult for brands like us to come in, have a sit down with with retailers and their staff members and tell them more about us, tell them more about what sets our brand apart, what makes our brand different. So having platforms like Top Tender, we bring the education right to them. Well, we see quite a bit in the states where uh, vertical integration is allowed is um, they will cross train their bed tenders uh, with, uh, um, on processing as well. So they'll get to kind of learn different aspects of the business or um, they may send one of their bed tenders to a conference to uh, learn more about social, uh, you know, social media marketing in the industry and, and what are some best practices for that. And then that, that bud tender is given the ability to um, take over the social, you know, maybe one or more of the social media accounts. Um, so we see, uh, you know, different operations getting creative with how they're uh, training these bud tenders, um, the different opportunities that they're providing to them, uh, especially kind of like David was saying, you know, uh, those bud tenders that are performing really well and they recognize that uh, they want to retain those bud tenders. So how do you retain them? Well, um, providing them different educational opportunities. Maybe one of them has always wanted to go to um, the NCIA conference in San Jose, um, providing them with that opportunity to get to, to go to that conference. Um, maybe one of them has wanted to um, has always wanted to get into processing. And so uh, there are a couple of operations that actually do tuition reimbursement. Um, and that person will go and take a chemistry class and the operation will pay for, you know, that community college chemistry class that they take. So, you know, providing them with opportunities and, you know, the onus is really, just depending on the size of the organization, the onus is either on the, the owners, the managers, or the HR business partners or directors, in most cases for these companies, to have these conversations with these employees and say, you know, you're doing a great job. What what do we need to do to make sure that we're going to be able to keep you here? Like, what what is it you want to do next? Um, what can we provide to you? Um, and that answer could be, you could have you know, 140,000 different answers for the 140,000 people that are working in the cannabis industry, Apple Plus, I guess now, uh, that are working in the industry. So um, it, it really is uh, more of an individual uh, decision as to kind of what they're looking to do next. I mean, that's, that's tough. That's tough. Because um, I think a lot of it for me is like, I'm, I am the calling category. I'm the, I'm the person that I believe this is my calling. I believe that cannabis can change people's lives, and I believe that I can be the stepping stone for people. Um, in terms of technology, I mean, there's I mean sites like WikiLeaf, uh, Cannabis Reports, Cannabis Reports specifically. dot com has been a um, a good resource for me, not only because they provide like genetic information, but they also have links to um, specific scientific studies about uh, different medical ailments and um, like the legit scientific studies that's like, you know, ground zero for uh, specific ailments. So I think I think that's been a big resource. Um, I think also too, uh, Dockside is a medically endorsed shop and I just went through my uh, MMC certification process and the information that I got from that 20 hour course on the history of cannabis and you know when THC was discovered and what it did and all that it took to go through that I think that is that's a really big um, a really useful tool as well and I think that if you are at a medically endorsed shop and you have the opportunity to be a consultant you should do it just because of the information you get from that learning, the, from that course. If you're part of that 33% calling group, the other group just sees, I mean, maybe some shops put up an incentive or you'll get a dollar more an hour or something like that, that really people see green, you know? They don't see the passion and that, that's the whole 30, 33%, that's really in it for their calling opposed to just the culture.
So Ashley, do you see your managers trying to implement uh, some incentives since being thrown to the wolves when you first started? Ha have you seen any improvement in terms of the tools available for you to use to make an educated recommendation? Oh yeah, I was just going to double up. Um, I went through Medical Marijuana 411 as my company to be a consultant and they I've been able to download everything and refer back to it as I need to, um, even in the 10 hour continuing education course. There's amazing, amazing new studies that just kind of came out in 2017 and 18 that they had in that continuing education course. So it was awesome getting to download all of that. They're not trying to hoard it or, you know, pay us for every little dime. And with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. I want to thank all my guests for being here with the Bud Tenor panel. That's Alec Langston. He's a Bud Tenor at Dockside Cannabis. Uh, Brian Yeager right here, CEO of LemonHaze.com. We have Ashley Herkett, Bud Tenor at Green Lady Pot Shop in Olympia. On the line with us is Rebecca Berry, Senior Account Manager at Work. And also on the line with us is Claire Kaufman, Director of Client Services at Brightfield Group. Previously recorded is Tom Geiger, Communications Director of the Union in Seattle, UFCW 21. Also Kara Bradford and David Moret, Co-Founders at Viridian Staffing. And Zara Cole and Tyler Nestorenko of Bud Tender's Ball. But don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. <laughs>